Hi and welcome to a video on derivatives of polynomials, really talking about the power rule and we're going to specifically focus on tangent line examples in this video. So let's first start with a, a decently easy derivative so we can also graph it and, and see how we can look at our answer to make sure that it makes sense. This question is asking us to find an equation of the tangent line to the graph of f of x equals x squared plus 1 at the point 2, 5. Graph both on your calculator. So graph both the function and its tangent line. So one thing that we should know is if we're looking for an equation of any kind of line, we need two things. We need a slope and we need a point. And specifically in this case, because we're trying to find information about a tangent line, I'm going to label these tangent. Okay, so the slope of the tangent line. Well, the slope of a tangent line we should know from previous sections here is a first derivative. So the slope of the tangent line at any given point, which I do have a point here, is going to be linked to my first derivative. So I will find the first derivative of my function. This is the part where we are using power rule. So if I look here at f of x, f prime of x is going to be, bring down the two, Keep your base the same, so it's x. Now subtract 1 from your exponent. Now it's not x squared, it's x to the first, and the plus 1 falls off. This gives me the slope of the tangent line for any point x along that f of x curve. I want the slope of the tangent line at a specific point. So I know at, I want the slope of the tangent line at x equals 2. So I'm going to find specifically f prime of 2. So my f prime of 2 is the slope of the tangent line at that value to that given curve. So my slope of my tangent line is 4. And they gave me the point of 2, 5. So now it's a matter of remembering my algebra in writing the equation of a line. I like to use point slope form when I'm writing the equation of a line because then I don't need the specific y-intercept. It's just easier for me. If you like slope-intercept form to write the equation of a line, go for it. So y minus the y from my point, which was 5, equals my slope, which is 4, times x minus the x value from my point, which was 2. I will distribute so I can make this look a little bit nicer here. So that will be 4x minus 8, and then I will add the 5, so I do get 4x minus 3. And I'm going to write in words what this should be. This right here should be the slope of the tangent line to f of x at the point 2 comma 5. Okay, well let's see if this makes sense looking at our graphing calculators. Okay, so I have my graphing calculator and I'm going to type in the original function. I'm going to store that in y1 and then I'll go ahead and type in my tangent line in my y2. Okay, I'm going to just go ahead and graph in a normal window and see what this looks like. And again, that original blue curve is my original function. It's a parabola, just shifted up one. And here comes in what I believe to be a tangent line. Now it is important that it does look like it is a tangent to the curve at around this area. Sometimes what I hear is, oh, all I did for my tangent line is I added wrong. So instead of minus 3, I got for a tangent line 4x plus 3. And I want you just to take a look real quick at the graph and why that can't be. If we look at the graph of y equals 4x plus 3, this does not appear tangent anywhere near the point 2, 5 like it should be. Again, the point 2, 5, you know, might be somewhere up here. And so this does not appear tangent at that value. So I can see just by looking that I must have made a mistake and I would go back and look through my algebra to find where my mistake lies. All right, so now putting in the correct answer, I'm going to use my calculate menu. So second trace or calculate a value, 
at x equals 2 because a couple things should be happening here. My original function, y1 equals x squared plus 1, should be going through the point 2, 5 because it told me that the graph went through the point 2, 5. But also, if I arrow up or down to get to my next curve, notice on the color calculator these changed colors to match my function, it should tell me that my line is also on the point 2, 5. So that point is not only on the original function, but it's also on your tangent line. And that should make sense because that's called the point of tangency. If I wanted to zoom in more on this area, maybe a little bit closer to that point of tangency, I can, but I can tell that my answer looks very, very reasonable. That, in fact, is the equation of the tangent line at that point. Again, if you move your point, you certainly are going to have a different equation of a tangent line. Okay, so with that in mind, let's take a look at this next one. And I'm going to give you information about the tangent line, and you're going to work backwards to try to help me identify what the original function would be. So find k such that the line y equals negative 4x plus 7 is tangent to the function f of x equals k minus x squared, where k is what I'm trying to solve for. And hint, the slope of the tangent line equals the first derivative. That's kind of the theme for the power rule um, applications, if you will. So find k such that this line is tangent. So let's just think about what we know about a tangent line. Well, I know that the slope of the tangent line should be my first derivative at that specific value. Okay, well, what's the slope of your tangent line? It's in slope-intercept form, so I can see that the slope of my tangent line is negative 4. Okay, well, I know that I, if I take my function, which I've highlighted in blue, and find its derivative, I should be able to set that equal to negative 4. Well, f prime of x equals k is a constant. So the derivative of k would be 0, and so all I really have for my f prime of x is negative 2x using power rule. Okay, so I know that my slope of my tangent line should equal negative 4. My first derivative is the slope of a tangent line. So now I'm going to say negative 2x equals negative 4, which leads me to x equals 2. Now remember, when you're talking about lines to functions, it really doesn't matter kind of which way you're going, the line to the function or the function to the line, you still kind of are talking about a point of tangency to your curve, and that point of tangency is also on your tangent line. So this gives me the x value of the point of tangency. Okay, I can find the y value because if I know that it needs to be on my tangent line, I can substitute in 2 for x. So my point of tangency then is 2, negative 1. And now you think, gosh, what do I do with that? Well, you've actually done your derivative um, or used your derivative information. So now let's go back to the original. My original function is f of x equals k minus x squared. And I know that that has to go through the point negative 1, 2. Because see, we have three unknowns here. We have our y value or our function value, which is an unknown. I have the k value, which is what I'm trying to solve for. And I have an x value. Well, conveniently, I now know two of those three so I can solve for that arbitrary k. f of 2 is negative 1, and x is 2. So negative 1 equals k minus 4. So you can add 4 to both sides. So k must be 3. So what I think, if I write this out, is f of x is 3 minus x squared. And that's not my answer. They're only looking for k, but I certainly want to be able to check this using my graphing calculator. So I'm going to pull that out again. 
and I will type in my y1 and my y2 and I will take a look at the graph. So my original function again is in blue and let's see where it draws my tangent line and I'm really hoping that that tangent line has a point of tangency at 2, negative 1. So you can again use your calculate menu. Something else that people like to do is to use their table. So if you're not necessarily a visual person and you don't need to see it on here by going calculate a value at x equals 2 and then you can arrow up or down because your cursor is right there. So yep, that's a tangent line to the curve at that point because it takes the shape of your curve there. Really gives you a good estimate of those values right around that area. Um, so that's a really good tangent line right there. Or you could look at your table of values at x equals 2 to make sure that both your original function and your tangent line have that same y value. So some people like the table as well. I hope you found this video on the tangents helpful. There will be a follow-up video where we talk about normal lines. Thanks for watching.